Homicides rise in major cities across the country from Chicago to New York to Baltimore. A gray-haired Jesuit priest has been on a 30-year mission to curb the violence and not only save lives, but turn them around. Through Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles, his is a mission of redemption, hope, and second chances. For men and women, most of society has written off. Poppy Harlow reports on this week's American Opportunity. They call him Pops and Father G. Cheesy. This is a portrait of me from a guy on death row. And this. Are you kidding? I'll see you. I promise. I promise. Is his church. I've seen folks who are completely despondent and can't conjure up an image of what tomorrow is going to look like. But I've never met a monster. I've never met an evil person. Never. This Jesuit priest has buried more than 200 people, many of them under 18 years old, all lost to gang violence. You know, out here in L.A., man, the streets is real, you know? And I've been shot on two different occasions, for the record. It was a cycle of violence, a cycle of, 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 of being in the neighborhood. Why do you do this? The scripture has this thing about the widow, orphan, and the stranger, and these are the, the folks that you're supposed to have a preferential love for. These are the folks at the margins with folks who are, whose dignity has been denied and, and folks who are demonized. You call it boundless compassion. What is that? Well, it's a way of uh, kind of making room for uh, all, all these folks, you know, no matter what, to kind of uh, uh, know that everybody's a whole lot more than the worst things they've ever done. In the city of angels, gang life and drive-bys, not just the stuff of Hollywood tales. L.A. has more than 450 gangs with membership over 45,000, according to the LAPD. You'll hear Father Greg Boyle talk about infusing hope in those to whom hope is foreign. You call gang involvement the lethal absence of hope. Yeah. What is that? You know, not all choices are created equal. I wasn't exposed to poverty or violence or people running up to cars selling drugs or shooting. Everybody here has been exposed to that many times over. The luck he was born with drove Father Boyle nearly 30 years ago to create Homeboy Industries, pulling gang members out of the often deadly track they're on, helping them clean up their lives and giving them jobs. Who gets to come here? It's pretty much like the opposite of your typical job interview. We're looking for those people that have multiple felonies. We're looking for those people that um, are probably the hardest to serve as far as coming out of the gang life, coming out of those type of situations. Having served prison time doesn't hurt either. And um, the more tattoos you have, probably the better chance you have of being part of Homeboy Industries. I came in to remove my tattoos. They help them remove the symbols of their former life, taking off the tattoos that bind them. I feel like a different person. As you can see, trying to be a better father figure. Just live for a whole different life now. Well, you've got people who've killed people. Right. Who've carried out heinous crimes. Why does each person who walks through this door getting a second chance matter? I think that that answer is as diverse as humanity is, right? And I think we have to live by um, one of Father Greg's sayings, that you're not as bad as the worst thing that you've ever done. About a thousand former gang members and men and women who have just been released from prison walk through these doors each month. For many of them, it's a choice between life and death. And the way they see it here, nothing stops a bullet like a job. For Steve, Angela, Janet, Carlos, and Lamai, all former gang members, the uphill battle has been tremendous. How old were you when you joined a gang? Six or Thirteen. Ten. 13. 13. Did you think you'd live to see age 50? Raise your hand, any of you. No. Now do you think you'll live to see age 50? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Angela has lost custody of her four children. What do you feel like? like every day is like, you just have that glimpse of hope, you know what I mean? Like, I know as long as I keep one foot in front of the other and I keep doing the right thing and I don't backslide, like, it's gonna be okay, you know. Janet spent three years in prison. Carlos served 13 and Lamai served eight. Steve was sentenced to life, but was released after 17 years. The gang life, what, what is it that drew you in? 
it was just the feeling of being welcomed and being comfortable, you know, it's like a bunch of brothers and sisters that you didn't have. So it was like another family? Yeah, it was like another family away from my family. My whole life, pretty much family members being killed or in prison. Um, same thing, like, the gang was just a way of life. It was, um, I don't really feel like, um, like, I chose that lifestyle. That lifestyle, in a way, chose me. Homeboy for me is like second chances. It's like a chance at life, like a life I didn't know I had. You come here, and all the great just sees us as a normal human being, but then and then some. You know, he sees us as equals. Were you ever scared of relapsing, of falling back into jail? Yes, very much so. Very much so because what 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 kind of drew me into the gang culture was making money. It started with the money, make the drugs, you know, selling drugs. I mean, after a while, you come to realize that you do need a change. You can't just be out there your whole life running around not doing nothing for yourself. Why do you think this works? I think it, it works because people come in wanting that change. Um, we don't look for them. We don't advertise it. It, it's, it's on you, you know, you want to come here, you come willingly. More than 30,000 former gang members have come through Homeboy, and for those completing a special 18-month program, Boyle says only 30% return to prison. That's compared to more than 60% across California and close to 70% nationwide, just three years after they're released. Why are your numbers so much better? Well, I think a lot of times, you know, we have a menu and list of services to deliver and then we become the DMV, you know, it's like uh, now serving number 43. So what do you need? So you need counseling, okay. Parenting, good. Anger management, and we sort of dispatch people, but we don't do that here. What they do at Homeboy is job placement, mental health counseling, legal aid, solar panel installation training, and much more. Then a bond developed that's stronger than even their family, and certainly stronger than their gang. Homeboy says it only gets 2% of its funding from the government, and admits it is hard to raise money from many. We're a tougher sell because they're human beings who have uh, been to prison and who are gang members. This place begs the question, you know, what if we were to invest in these folks rather than endlessly, futilely trying to incarcerate our way out of this problem? Jose Asuna sees this through their eyes like few others can. Why do you help them? I help them because that's the world I came from. I served 13 years of my life in prison myself. Eight years ago, my 17-year-old son was shot in front of my house. I don't want any other parent to experience that type of pain. What is the most profound thing that has happened to you here? I jumped a guy into a gang when he was nine years old. And when he was 18, he received three life sentences. And all three life sentences were for crimes that he didn't commit. Eventually, through the appeal process, he was released. It took 18 years for that to happen. And last December, he walked through the door of my office and asked me to help him. And I felt that my life had gone complete circle because I had helped bring this individual into such a violent and negative lifestyle. And now I've been able to help him uh, re-enter society and start the process of finding himself. <sighs> because I love him. I've always loved him. That's what he was seeking from me when he was eight, nine, 10 years old. And I didn't know how to love him then. And so I'm just grateful that I know how to love him now. And Father Greg taught me that. It's a gift so great, repayment is nearly impossible. Is there anyone that you have not been able to find grace in somewhere? Never. Never. Poppy Harlow, CNN, Los Angeles. What a powerful story from our Poppy Harlow. We'll be right back.